Hello, hello, hello. My name is Jenna. This is 1111 with Jenna. I'm here seven days, seven nights, 14 times a week. It is Sunday, 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 September 18th. What's the score of the game? What's the score of the Bears game? Here's what I found. What's the score? Is it over? Did they win? Who won? No one knows. Score of the Bears game? Try. Oh, no, I don't know. Well, someone will tell me, right? Someone's looking it up. Is anybody there? Hello? Hello? Hello, William D. Lindemann. What a day. <sighs> what was your day? Are you coming on to do a brush with fame? Julie Luce, do you have a brush with fame? I have a good good question for next week. I like the brush with fame. And I said, if anybody, like I saw Carl tonight, Carl Hess. And I said, if you have to come on because I know you have some brushes with fame. So he's going to, hi, Pat. Pat, like last night he was with a comedian that's gonna be famous because he's gonna make him famous because of his art. I've already decided that. Huge, huge is going to be it at, um, what do you call it, in Manhattan, where Sebastian plays. Madison Square Garden. I want to sing it now, but I just do this and sing it. Sam Miller is his name. So when you see Sam Miller, 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 on stage at Madison Square Garden, it's because of Pat. There it is. Okay. Is anybody coming on tonight to tell your brush with fame story? I've had some really great brushes with fame. Like when I met James Taylor, that was a cool one. I think I've told that story. Um, Ella Fitzgerald, what else is famous? Oh, oh, I met someone once. She wasn't very nice. Rosa McDonald's not very nice. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty. Jenna Mamina is live. Whew. Thanks for watching the show today. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a generous tip for Jenna and David. I'm editing the privacy. We had a good time hanging out with lots of beautiful people. I saw a friend of mine from high school, David Crandall, who I haven't seen. I've seen him online over the years. And I think maybe we saw each other once somewhere, maybe 30 years ago. He was in town for his 40th reunion last night. Oh, she loves the photo, thank you. Thank you so much, exclamation point. So sweet. A tea. So, I'm trying to think of somebody I haven't met. And I didn't, I always wanted to meet Lucy. I didn't get to meet her. I'm waiting for Cher, but y'all know that already. And I am now public. So I'm sitting here by myself, just waiting. <sighs> yeah, the show is really, really fun. This is so, it's so, it's such an honor to play with him. Hey, Mama Grace. Mama Grace with a beautiful face. Mama Grace with a beautiful face. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty Loman. Ginger Flower. Hey girl, what's up? <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen. William D. Lindemann in the house. Hey, check you out. 
in the bay. 415. Really, it's all about the 510. Hello, Ginger. Yes. Hey there. Rob Morocco. Hi. Hi. Well, I have a I have a brush, uh, not with a famous person, with a but with a famous with a famous I event. A brush, uh, I think, I think have, yeah. I have a brush with a famous uh, event in American history. Okay. okay. We're ready. Okay. Uh, when I was during the time I was active, and I still am active at the uh, public access center, public access center. Uh, in Kalamazoo, it's called the Public Media Network now. There was a guy that they had working for IT, information technologist. His name is Bob Brown. Bob Brown. He's from New York City. And he was trained as a physicist and a mathematician. But early on, he got into uh, computers during the time when it was developing. So he knows a lot about it because he's got a mathematical background. Uh, you know, he has a deep uh, understanding of it. But if, he spent many years in the financial uh, industry and he worked at Twin Towers and uh, he worked for Merrill Lynch at the time. He knew people like Bob Bloomberg uh, when they were coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, well, when 9 11 happened, the New York Stock Exchange decided that it was going to go back online in one week. So, Bob was one of the people that they called because they knew of his deep knowledge of the internet. So, they called him into New York immediately, and he worked virtually around the clock for a whole week like three shifts just around the clock almost constantly and he donated all his pay he didn't care about that he donated it to victims but the, the new york stock exchange went back online in one week wow and they they flew him back here to kalamazoo in a new york stock exchange plane so that's my brush with fame a famous incident in american history very interesting yeah. And, and where is he now? He's in, uh, I think it's Oregon. They had the, uh, he's re, it's the company that runs the Grand Coulee Dam. I think it's in Oregon, Portland. And he's restructuring their financial, their bonds, you know, because of his financial background. So they hired him to restructure their bonds. That's what he was doing the last time I heard. Restructuring their bonds. Yeah, you know, after years, things, the bonds are not up to date. You know, it's, it's complicated. It's all financial stuff. But he's hired to straighten it all out and modernize it. How oh, cool. That's what he's doing the last I heard. But and, that's something you never hear about. You know, they, the New York Stock Exchange went back online in one week. One week. And that's where it happened, you know, right there. Sure. Yeah, it is right yeah. where it happened. Right? Right around the corner, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Have you spent much time in New York? Me? Mm -hmm. No, I was there one week. No. One week when I was 15, we were visiting with my mm -hmm. family when I was 15. And then, oh, about 25 years ago, uh, no, it was in, early, in the early 80s, uh, a friend of mine was involved with uh, Arista Records, and that's when he, when he was in the studio working as a songwriter, when he was calling me up every day to tell me about this fantastic singer named uh, Whitney Houston. That nobody had heard about mm -hmm. but we went there finally in uh right about the time whitney's album came out uh but it didn't work out we were there about a week that's the only time i've spent in new york what didn't work out uh he was 
working as a songwriter for for uh, Clive Davis at Arista. At least that's what he told me. But when you went there, he couldn't get in touch with him. Mm. So it turned out that he was lying to me. So we all go through that in our lives, yeah. being lied to. And, you know, you have to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> no. That was a big trauma. Oh, that's, I'm, yeah. I'm laughing because I guess. You no, know, it's, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. What did you do today, William? I taped uh, my pastor's music. Um, basically, I was so tired. I just, you know, I wanted to go see you, but I know I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. There wasn't enough time. It's all good. So I just went to bed <laughs> and slept. I just got up. Oh, good for you. Yeah. So I, I have, so if anybody still wants to come on and, and tell your, uh, it's storytelling and yeah. it's Brush With Fame. I saw Phyllis today, speaking of Brush With Fame. Um, but I have a question for next week, but since you're here, I'm going to ask you now mm -hmm. and anybody else that wants to come on. Did you, do you, did you have, or do you have now a piece of clothing that you just love? A jacket, a sweater, like, is there something you remember from when you were a kid? That, that brings back good memories, that kept you warm, just some piece of clothing that you just love and maybe it disappeared or I don't know, whatever the story is. Well, the only thing at the moment that I can think of is I got a pair of uh, uh, loafers, of uh, the Earth Shoes brand. Earth Shoe loafers? Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah. So they weren't, they didn't have tie. I loved my earth shoes, but they had ties on them. They had. Yeah, the ties. They were the ties. They weren't loafers. They were the ties. Earth. Oh, I loved my earth shoes. And oh. I, the first time I put them on, I couldn't believe it. I felt like I was walking on springs. It was absolute re revelation. So I, I kept, it kept breaking and I kept bringing them to a uh, repair shop to repair the straps, but it, Never did repair, you know, it just kept on breaking, but I still have them. <laughs> I love Earth Shoes. You know, I love them so much, I still have them. They don't make them the same. I used to buy yeah. my Earth Shoes yeah. at, my I, my brother had a girlfriend, Mary Stewart, mm -hmm. who went to, they went to Interlochen together and then she went to Western. Yeah. And I used to hang out with her. I was 12 and I was yeah. hanging out at, Inter, at Western and she wore Earth Shoes and 501s and cool sweaters or a flannel shirt. So here I was in fifth grade yeah. wearing earth shoes and 501 jeans and all my yeah. friends were wearing, you know, pink dresses and yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll never forget the, the uh, feeling of walking on springs. I just can't, I can't explain it. It was a magical. They really are. Yeah. They no. really are quite great. Not everybody can wear them, but they were perfect for me. Oh, I loved them, and I loved the wide toe box, and yeah. I had some blue suede. What was the the little the little boy and the dog shoes? Buster Brown. Buster Brown. Yeah. Blue suede, earth shoes. Wow. <laughs> because wow. the Hardings. I don't know if you remember this, Mom, but Harding's in Stevensville used to sell shoes. The grocery store sold shoes. Mm -hmm. So I had a pair. So if you got anybody has an inspiring clothing story, I know there's some clothing people on this show right now. I, have, I probably have one or two others. I just can't think of them at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's something to think about. Yeah. And, and Patty said, you're right, William. We've all been lied to. Oh, yeah. Big time. One time, I have a good story about some, I had these really cool sunglasses that I liked and they were, um, they were the kind of, they were ski glasses, not ski goggles, but they were the 80s kind and they had the rainbowy reflection on them. And I love these sunglasses. They look like slee stack kind of glasses, if anyone knows what a slee stack is. 
and I lost them. And my friend Naomi, who died two weeks ago, last night, walked up and met me somewhere and she was, she's like, hey girl. And I said, those are my sunglasses. She goes, oh, I picked them up about a week ago. I didn't know whose they were. <laughs> so I gave her my sunglasses that I was wearing. I go, I love those sunglasses so much. So I gave them back. She gave them to me and then I gave her a pair that I was wearing, but I just remembered that. So yeah, think about that for next week. What do you have going on for this week? Uh, just routine. I'm probably looking for a part-time job. Just for routine. You were working. You were working where? Walmart. Walmart and Walgreens. Yeah. And Walgreens. Yeah. And 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 you just decided. Well, Walgreens let me go after 90 days. That was all they were obligated for. I don't know really why. They were happy with my work. That wasn't the problem. They probably wanted somebody who was could work full time and young right. probably to take yeah. a train yeah. from the future. Yeah, forget about that. Hold on, we have another person. You ready? Oh no, yep. I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh ginger, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't mean for you to find out that way, but yeah. Naomi died two weeks ago last night uh, about this time actually the world changed but now we have another guest patrick moriarty in the house hey. wild man <laughs> yeah names love that logo i gather of the stars that's a fun one Can't really talk about it, but you caught me at a good moment. And now there's Pat. Hey. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, cool. How are you guys doing? Good. Hey. Hey. Uh, I think I you, watched... have a, you have an extra device on. Do you have two devices in front of you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. How are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, think I watched. You have, you have an extra device on. There, I always have to shut off my Facebook because my Facebook echoes and it's like I'm watching your show on Facebook and then I decide to get on and then Facebook is broadcasting it and I'm like, oh, what? Uh, I'm kind of same thing it. happens to me, right. exactly the same thing. The same thing, yeah. you guys both do the same thing. Enting Hi senior there. citizen thinking, I, th I guess. <laughs> so you met a so comedian last night. Last night. Yeah, yeah. Sam Miller's the comedian. Um, I've met him before, but I met up with him. Uh, I, I went to go see him. He did a stand up thing in uh, uh, Port Townsend, Washington last night. And that's not too far from where I live. And um, so uh, about, I don't know, a few months ago, he did a show in Olympia, Washington at the Capitol Theater. And that's where they filmed him and recorded him for this um, uh, his debut album. He's got a, a three record deal with uh, Stand Up Records, and this is his first record. And uh, my son, Jack, and I went to go see him do his thing. And so that's where I met him. But uh, but since then, uh, the record label hired me to do his album cover. And then uh, I was working on it like last week and the week before. I was showing it to you in progress yeah. a little bit, Jenna. And I, and I couldn't get his face right. I drew his face you like a million of, you times. Showed, you showed it on the show, but we didn't really say what it was. Yeah. But um, I finally got it done, and I, I, I photoshopped the final head in there, the one that I wanted. And, and uh, um, so he, he loves it. He's really happy about it. So then I'm like, oh, I was so relieved because I was like sweating bullets all week because they turned it in last week. And, and yeah, I, you never know how someone's going to respond to your version of drawing them, whether they, you know, it's a comedy album, so I was trying to make it funny, you know. But uh but he likes it so and so then i went ahead and uh i drove up to uh port townsend last night and he played at the i think it's called the the man the manria theater or manria castle theater and it, it's a giant uh a hotel I mean, not a theater hotel it's a giant hotel and it does look like a castle and um uh it sold out there was a ton of people there How big it was, was it? um <sighs> 
Well, it's a hotel. So to me, it reminded me of The Shining. You know, yeah. it was like this, whoa, this hotel is huge. I don't even know like which venue is he doing his show in. And I went into this downstairs bar and um, uh, I saw Sam there. Uh, he's 14 years sober. So he gave me his, uh, his drink <laughs> token. And so I got a free beer. And uh, then uh, uh, they showed me the room that they were, that they were gonna perform in. There were three comedians. And uh, how big was it? Uh, I don't know, the size of a basketball court or something. I mean, it was a pretty big room, but it's like super old fashioned and had all these wooden arches and all this stuff. And uh, a group of people got turned away at the door. And um, anyway, it was, it was really fun. Are and, they all uh, three on the same label? No, I don't even think they're even all three uh, ever um i think they just cross paths they're they just they're comedians and they all got their own cars and they all got their own gigs and sometimes they're together and sometimes they're playing at different places so i saw so I, and since i i got a free uh, uh ticket to get in there even though it was sold out but uh you know there wasn't really much room so i got to sit with the comedians and uh so that was fun and and uh anyway it, it, it was a fun night is that yeah. kind of is that a new brush with fame for you then? Well, yeah, I would say so. I uh, I, I know this guy is going to go places because he's just super funny. You know how some people can just stand there and they're funny already. Yeah. You know that he's one of those kind of people, and um, he he just stands there and he's got a real deadpan face and he just sort of just has this real uh, uh, a blunt and. Uh, straightforward way of talking and it's just funny the way he does it, it I, I don't know how people do that it's like it's something inherent i mean look it's called talent <laughs> yeah yeah but uh um he, he's 14 years sober so a lot of his uh routines is um about his uh his days before and the trouble he got into and then he eventually he started becoming a counselor and working uh 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 at a homeless shelter and, and i even think like his routine stems from um like the 12-step program you know where you got to get up there and you got to say hi i'm sam miller and i'm an alcoholic you know now he's like hi i'm sam miller i'm a comedian from olympia washington it's just the <laughs> same routine so he got really funny having be forced into public speaking right you know i think that's what i picked up last night about him but he's going to Chicago on Friday. And you know what, Jenna, he's coming to Michigan. Really? Yeah. Um, I'll ask him where. Probably it, it, while he's right after he's in Chicago. Yeah, it'll probably be. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll find out. But I, I suspect it's a private party. So I'm not even sure what the deal is, but I'll find out where it is and I'll tell you. I don't know if you're into going to seeing comedians. I love, oh, I love I watching love comedians. I used to go used see to this see guy. guy. Ginger, do you remember Tree? There's a comedian from the Bay Area. His name was Tree. Wow, it's raining in Chicago. Downpour. Oh. That's good. You like rain. Let's see. Every, and I watered my plants tonight, so that's good. Pat, do you have any clothing that you, any clothing stories? clothing stories yeah, i was all ready to tell you my brush with fame story oh. i was going to tell you that uh uh my that uh, how frank gorshin you know the guy who played the riddler on batman oh right oh tell he, that story tell he, that he story. hit on tell he hit story. on my mom once and um so uh uh my my mom was the uh, uh, yeah the guy who played the riddler on the batman show and he he also like was a, an impressionist he was on uh the Ed Sullivan show and it's like yeah. Douglas and all those kinds of voices. And he was, uh, he, he played villains a lot, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, but he's most known for being the Riddler. You know, he had those tights with the question marks all over his body and he had the, the little black mask. And he'd go, <laughs> he was like one of the villains. But, uh, my mom, uh, uh used to be a, a waitress in the sixties, uh, at a place called the pheasant run. And, uh, it was like a nightclub and, uh, a lot of celebrities would come in there. Um, my parents used to go there. Grace, do you remember what the pheasant run? 
She, I just, I'm asking. I remember. Oh, do you remember? Remember? yeah. I'm not. It may still be there for all I know. But uh, you know, I was born in Chicago and lived there for my a little bit of my childhood. But uh, my mom used to be a waitress at this place, and uh, the waitress had, had to dress sexy. You know how it was in the '60s, and and so she'd get hit on once in a while. And um, uh, 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 F- Frank Gorshin was. I kind of get the impression that he was kind of a skirt chaser type guy. And um, I, I've also heard that he wanted to be in the Brat Pack, but they, he wasn't cool enough. They wouldn't let him in. But um, I love that guy. I thought he was a great actor. But uh, uh, he uh, uh, he hit on my mom, and my mom wasn't taking the bait. You know, so, uh, uh, you know, she's married and got kids and stuff, and, but she was hot. And But, but this, other, uh, this other waitress... Uh, took the bait another waitress that worked there and um so then uh uh like years later this was like you know that was in the 60s well in the 1990s uh my then girlfriend and i used to like to go see uh uh uh, uh washed up acts or, or, or not washed up acts but older acts like we went and saw johnny cash and, and one time frank frank orson came to the show box and he was going to redo his whole act from uh, the Ed Sullivan show. And he was an old guy by then. He's, he's deceased now. But uh, he was going to do his whole Ed Sullivan act. He used to be a stand-up before he was an actor. So uh, we went to that show, and it was great. He just, you know, because there's still clips of him doing that stuff on, on probably on YouTube. But uh, then we were standing in line to get, like, an autograph or T-shirts or something. And I was in line and thinking about it. Go, what can I, what can I talk to him about? I was like, I know, I know. I, I wonder. This is a long shot, but I'm going to bring up that my mom was a was a waitress at the Pheasant Run. So we're in there, and I'm like, yeah, I was. Uh, I lived in Chicago in the '60s, and 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 uh, my mom used to work at the Pheasant Run, and you used to go. He goes, yeah, I remember the Pheasant Run and stuff. I said, well, she was a waitress there, and she told me one time that uh, uh, you kind of were like uh, making the moves on her. And um, she uh, she wasn't interested, but uh, this other waitress, her friend, I think her name was Francie, and she she did go out with you. Do you remember that? And he kind of like stared at me for a while. Then he goes, "Your mom was a beautiful woman." Wow. He didn't say anything about the other waitress. Wow. <laughs> like he's he, he remembered the one that got away. <laughs> no way. The one he couldn't have. Wow. And you but told the, your mom that story. Yeah, I was trying to get her. I, I talked to her on the phone tonight. I said, hey, you should come on uh, the show with me. And you can tell the 60s part of the story. And then I'll, and then I'll uh, update it with this, uh, with, with, with when I went to the show box. And um, her uh, computer is on the fritz. And she doesn't know how to get Zoom on her phone and stuff. And so it's like, uh, uh I'll get her on here sometime, but yeah, she I'm wasn't able to do it tonight. So you had your, you were on a, a show this week and you're, you had another relative on this show. Oh, uh, I have one more Frank Gorshin thing to say. Oh, this, the, now this, 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 this updates it to Is 20. Is he still alive? Oh, uh, no. no, he's not. No. But, but this updates it to 2023, 2022. Um, I've got a friend from Minneapolis, uh, uh, his name's Matt and his uh, girlfriend, uh, uh, Lola, and uh, they sold their house and they bought a van and they've been for two years, they've been driving around the country, just kind of being vagabonds. I'm just jealous of them. But uh, so earlier this summer, they came to my place and uh, they stayed, they parked their van and they stayed for a couple of days. And uh, Lola, she's like in her, her early 60s, maybe 63. And She's really beautiful and she's an actress and she's worked with Frank Gorshin. And um, so I, I told them the story and, and she had something to say about him. He said that um, eventually Frank the, uh, uh, hooked up with an actress named uh, Tura Satana, do you know, or Satana? She, she, she was in that movie, Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Do you, do you remember that movie? And she was like a villain and she was like this uh, Japanese American actress and she kind of had this Betty Page haircut and she'd wear black tight leather, big boobs and she'd have guns and she would kick guys in the crotch and stuff. She was like like a real uh, B-movie actress. 
uh, a lot of guys know who she what is. What was her name? Uh, uh, Tura Satana. It's T U R A S A T A N A. T U R A. That's her first name. Tara Satana. Yeah, Tara Satana. She had a. And, uh, oh, yeah, I remember who was a Japanese American actress and exotic dancer from 13 film and television credits. Interesting. Yeah, she, oh, she's been a bunch of like oh, no, she died. kind of a femme fatale, yeah, kind of like villainous, tough, yeah, tough girl. Her. Sure. Well, she ended up with Frank uh, Gorshin up until his death. She was his girlfriend. Wow. And um, so uh, uh, when um, my friend Lola was uh, uh, acting with him, they were doing theater. Um, Tura, she was getting kind of older by then and probably kind of insecure about her sexuality and stuff. She was super jealous of Lola, who at that time was a young thing. And, and I think she like played a sexy nurse or something in some theater thing. And so she was super jealous of, uh, of Lola. She hated her because she thought sure that Frank was gonna, was after her, you know, and she said he wasn't, they were just acting together and stuff. But, but uh, Tura was really jealous of her. And uh, one time they were in a big fight and she like sent a whole bunch of the gifts that uh, Frank had given her and sent them to Lola. And she's like, I sent all my stuff. I sent all my gifts to your girlfriend, you know, to kind of like stick it to him a little bit. And she felt all awkward. She didn't know what to do with these things, these uh, cards and, and uh, you know. And this know, is the woman that was just like, staying at your house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so uh, she she acted with him on theater stuff towards the end of his life. And Tura was super jealous of her because she was this young thing, and and she was just already like, I bet Frank was a skirt chaser. I just bet he was. It just sounds like that, you know. She's and, uh, something. I'm still looking at photos of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was in some great science fiction wow. movies, Astro Zombies, and. Uh, Faster Pussycat Kill Kill is a classic uh, B movie. He died at 72, February 7th, 2011. Frank Orshin? No, Tura. Tura did, yeah. Well, there you go. Wow. <laughs> so there's the, the trilogy, the three chapters of Frank Orshin. How interesting, interesting. that it, it came full circle. <laughs> I know it's so weird. It's the, it's the, it's and then Lola's and... like, "Oh yeah, she yeah, I got a bunch of her stuff." Yeah. Anyway, there's my story. Thank you. Well, think about a piece of clothing. Oh, something like... that like a favorite sweater or flannel shirt or socks. Hmm. I've got a cool red paisley sweater that I got. Um, from this girl I was going out with back in the 1980s. And it's really cool. It's like, it's so cool. I only wear it on rare occasions because um, I don't want to do anything. It's vintage and uh, it's red. I ought to go get it, but it's it's red okay. and it's got paisley all over it. Okay. It sounds like an 80s, is it like a Bill Cosby sweater? No, it's kind of like a 60s hipster sweater. Oh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll go find it. I know where it is. <laughs> I gotta go in the house. I'll be right back. <laughs> Spontaneity. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. So I wonder, are we gonna get rain here tonight? Maybe if Patty has rain. We were, it was supposed to rain today during my show, and I was so nervous. And then I thought, nah, he didn't get it. Because next week, I'm not sure where. I, I think next week, I'm gonna. That was a terrific show. Uh, uh, Cindy and the Clowns really got, got to me. Yeah, yeah, really got, got to me. Perform that before. Yeah, just beautiful. And, and I trusted trust the, the lyric, lyric, and then the lyric, the lyric was, was a little bit goofy, goofy at the end, so I, I, I had to figure something else something out. But yeah. thank, thank you. you. I, 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 I love working with David. Wonder what? Do you hear that echo? Check it yeah, out. Yeah, Is that show? It's it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's a super cool sweater. Sure. And so I very rarely wear it because uh, 
um, I don't want it. To, I want it to last. I've had this thing for years, mm -hmm. but uh, whenever I, it's so bright red, I don't know if it shows that on the screen. But whenever I wear it, people are like, "Wow, that's a cool sweater. Where'd you get that?" Yeah. Yep. I kind of feel bad, like I should have given it back to that girl when we broke up. But I wanted this. I just I wanted to keep this. <laughs> the oh, memento. Yeah. See, I can't even wear it too long now because you know, I'll, I'll get body sweat on it. You might. You might ruin it tonight. All right. All right. See, I knew there would be this Only for special occasions. So 1111 was a good occasion to put on the, the Paisley sweater. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so everybody else think about something for next week, but I have a feeling I'm going to be, I think next week's show is going to be live and fast on Sunday. So I'm warning you. Have you ever watched it? Patty would like to know. Have I ever watched it? No, I haven't. There's your answer there. Well, I should probably go. I got a deadline. I'm working on something. Go to work. I got to go. You're on a, uh, I've got four seals in convertibles. No, f five seals in convertibles. And it's for that song, So Easy, that I told you about. It's a single. And there is a reference in, in it about a bunch of seals all um, barking in unison like cars. So I took it out, out of the lyrics. Oh, cool. I'm trying to get it done. All right. All right. We won't keep you. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Bye. Security, everybody. Thank you. Good meeting. It's a pleasure. Yep, I'm going to bed too. Do you have a letter for me, William? I'll say, oh, he's gone too. Everybody's just left. And I will just say good night all. And everybody's sleeping long. And you know I'm singing to a Stevie Wonder too. So stay safe, stay healthy, and be, be real nice. Oh, yes, so oh, be. And I know all of you are so cool people, so... Stay safe, stay healthy, and be real nice. And come on back here once or twice this week. Share the show. And I gotta go. Oh, there you go, there you go. Think about some clothing like that cool paisley sweater and William D. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Oh, yes. You are out of sight, oh yeah. I will pick a letter right here. It's gonna be from your thoughts. Make them sweet thoughts from your words. Make them song-like and from your heart, oh, from your heart. Make them silly, oh, make them silly, yeah. I'm just, I'm just kind of silly. Have a beautiful night, everybody. Love hard.